Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Uh I'm actually going to do the show solo today, like Han Solo from Star Wars, you know, just, except I'm not Han Solo. But anyway, I was going to, we got a great show today because I've got some recruiting stuff. Everybody loves recruiting talk. We're going to talk about Major Burns transferring from Georgia back to LSU, the Baton Rouge DB. I'm going to talk about who he is. I watched him play at Madison Prep when he was a senior. We're going to talk about Cole Kelly being named really the one AA football player of the year, the Heisman Trophy of Subdivision One from Southeastern College. That's a big deal, man. I remember seeing Cole Kelly play at Turlings Catholic High School. We're going to talk about the scrimmages that I've been to this week in Louisiana. And if you're a parent, don't be upset. I can't get all the schools in on one show. So I've only got the, uh, enough time to do about six or seven schools, and we'll talk about all the schools during the season. But today we're going to talk about the schools that I saw this past week. It's been a little wet this week, a little rainy, so I've been writing high schools this week. And before we get started, I want to mention our great advertisers, because if we don't have the advertisers, we don't have a podcast. So our first advertiser and our first one to come on board was is John Harvey Toyota. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it into Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They were paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut your your check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Tommy Harvey and the great people, and also Medine's Collision Center. With all this rain. All this bad weather the last few days, it's prayers for everybody in the state of Louisiana, by the way, and if you're listening to this all over the country, prayers for all families. I hate to see cars uh, floating in water. I hate to see people stranded, and, and it just makes me sad. I just We're, we're going to be okay, though. We're going to get through this, but if you if you need to bring your car in to get it fixed, you got to go to Medine's Collision Center in Baton Rouge on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 225-357-7983. Ask for Chris Medine or his wife, Dominica, or their son, Jesse Medine, who's the operations manager. They do a great job at Medine's Collision Center. Been open since the 1960s. They're family-owned. That means a lot to me because we're family-owned, our company. Let's go ahead and get right into this. Let's talk about... The first subject today is Major Burns transferring back to LSU from the University of Georgia. If you haven't read the newspaper and you don't know who Major Burns is, Major Burns is a kid that came out of high school a year ago, was one of the top defensive backs in the country, played high school football at Madison Prep High School, who won the state championship, by the way, last year. And Major uh, was just one of those guys that if you watched him on film like I did, he was tall, long, smart. He's going to fill out. He, he'll hit you. He can run for days. He's a 4.40 in the 40. 6'2", legit 6'2", in height, about 180, coming out of high school. Played at Georgia last year as a true freshman. Played a lot and looked good, by the way. And he's going to play probably at around 190 this year. He's going to go to safety where LSU needs a safety. They got they had one scholarship left. They are using that last scholarship from the 25-man class on Major Burns. I love the name. But let me tell you about Major Burns outside the football field and the helmet. This is a great young man. He lost his dad. His dad passed away while he was in high school. So his mom raised him through high school at Madison Prep. Great people. Great people, great kid, great student. People don't ever mention this usually. They just talk about a kid's ability, but great young man and great talent. Here's a guy, if he would have stayed at Georgia, would have been a starter in his second year. He get, Remember, he gets his year back because of COVID, so he's still a freshman and not a sophomore. He played last year in, I think, seven games for Georgia. Good-looking kid. I think he's going to compete to start at LSU, and he was in LSU's recruiting class in 2019, 
but uh, LSU let him go to Georgia. It's one of those things where they, you know, Major decided to go to Georgia. LSU kind of backed off of him. He was committed, which was a mistake in my opinion. And now a miracle, the kid comes back to Baton Rouge. He's leaving Georgia to come back to Baton Rouge and go to LSU where he wants to play football. He is six foot two, close to 190 now. He's long, he's strong, he's fast, he's a great safety. He looks like, he looks like a Delpin in height and weight. You know, he looks like a Grant Delp, but he looks like a, a, you know, LaRon Landry. I'm not saying he's LaRon. I'm not saying he's Grant. It's just in body style. He's that tall, long guy that's going to be 210, 215 when he's done. And he can run, and he's smart, and he's a good kid. And he can play. LSU needed a safety. I didn't think Sage Ryan was the free safety they needed or Derek Davis from Pennsylvania. They're going to be good players. Or Langwa, they're all strong safety types. They really needed a free safety, and that they got him. They got the guy they, that they needed, Major Burns. If you're an LSU fan listening to the show, it was a huge pickup. And now, now they use their final scholarship up on Major Burns from Madison Prep High School. Welcome back, what Major Burns. Glad to have you back in Louisiana at LSU. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Cole Kelly. And we're going to talk about the scrimmages that I went to. I'm going to talk about some recruits at certain high schools in the state of Louisiana, as many as I can get in in the podcast today. We can't get them all in today. We can't get all 300 high schools in today, but we'll we'll try hard to get as many in as we can. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We just got to talking about Major Burns transferring from Georgia to LSU. Is it safety, a free safety? He's going to get his year back. We're going to talk in this segment about Cole Kelly. Cole Kelly. If you don't remember who Cole Kelly is, he was at Arkansas. Remember the Razorbacks? Played a little quarterback against LSU a couple of years. Six foot seven, 250 pounds. Now he's trimmed up. He was about 270. Now he's about 245. Transferred to Southeastern, started this year, and was named the Louisiana Sports Writers Association Offensive Player of the Year and one of six Lions named to the 220 221 All Louisiana football teams, which was released by the LSWA on Monday, two days after winning the Walter Payton Award. The Heisman Trophy of the FCS as the nation's top offensive player. Kelly was named the top st- offensive player at any level in the state. And he is the first Southeastern football player to earn Offensive Player of the Year honor since Brian Bennett. Remember that name? Quarterback that transferred from Oregon in 2013. Brian Bennett was a heck of a quarterback at Southeastern. He was a California native that transferred from Oregon. Mariotta was there. He couldn't beat him out. A lot of people couldn't beat him out. Marcus Mariotta, who didn't have a great pro career with the Titans, but he was a great college quarterback. Kelly was one of three Southeastern players on the first team, along with Jalen Bell, offensive lineman, and junior defensive back for Lando Jordan, who's who's got an NFL future. Kid's good. Jason Lejeune did a lot of their games. He, he knows. He saw these guys play. And I'm real happy for Cole Kelly. I watched Cole play in high school at Turlings Catholic. I watched him play against Calvary Baptist in person in Lafayette his junior year. And I watched him several other games his senior year. And he's got a pro career. He just needed to just mature, and he has. Sometimes when you go into that third year in college and you change colleges and you, you get another chance, and he did a phenomenal job at Southeastern this year. Um, threw for 2,662 yards, 18 touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns. What a great year for Cole Kelly. And, and I think he's got a pro career. He's got another year of college left at Southeastern. I'm sure Frank Selfo is happy to know that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the scrimmages I went to this past week 
and I'm going to talk about as many teams as I'm able to talk about for one podcast. We'll be right back. Looking for a used car? Harvey Artos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. The topic this, this segment, we're going to talk about recruiting, class of 222, but scrimmages. You know, it's that time of year, spring's ending. Thank God we have spring football this year. We didn't have it last year. Where kids can get to learn the basics of the game. Coaches can go teach, and teams can get better for the fall. Come August, we'll have jamborees, hopefully, which I think we will. We'll be back on track, and in September, we'll kick the pigskin off, and these games will count. But I want to go ahead and mention some, uh, some recruiting stuff that I was able to get this past week. I went to Catholic High Baton Rouge. That's right. I visited Catholic at Baton Rouge. I sat down with Coach David Semino, the new head coach. And let me tell you, Catholic High Baton Rouge, they won their third state title in six years in 2020. Their third. They got a chance to win their fourth in seven years. A little scoop, they have several D1 players on their team in this 222 class, several D1s, the most I've ever seen from Catholic in one year. I know they've had work done in Kevin Franklin and Clyde Edwards and Geis, and they've had all these great backs, but they never had seven senior D1 guys. This year they potentially have seven. But the, the, the headliner of the group is Emory Jones, big offensive tackle that's a legitimate 6'4", about 325, long. He has arms of someone 6'7". And a little scoop coach told me that it's down to really Florida State and LSU. Florida State, he did visit recently and liked it a lot, that being Emory Jones. Emory's one of the top 25 offensive linemen in the country overall in any position on the O-line. I think he'll be a guard in college. He's a tackle in high school, could play tackle, but I think he would be better suited to go inside and be a run-stuff blocker. He's got the body of a Trey Turner. And he's a guy that he excels more at run blocking, I think, more naturally than he would be outside on the edge with these 6'5 guys in the SEC. But it's down to Florida State and LSU. I know LSU would like to get him. They also have one of the top punters and kickers in the country, the best punter in the state, in Kylan Dupree, who's getting a lot of tread right now from Missouri. That's right. The University of Missouri has reached out to Kylan and an offer a first offer for Wesley Woodward, the defensive end from Catholic High. Nichols State just offered him the other day. I want to mention that. Wesley Woodward's one of the top defensive ends in the state. If you just like a guy that just puts his helmet on and works and tough, strong, and can play, he can play D1 ball. He's 6'2", about 250, might be around 255 come fall. Runs about a 4'7", looks faster. He's also the nephew of Scott Woodward, the LSU athletic director. And he's a class of 222. They've got other kids, Jalen Toaston, a DN, who's D1. Corey Singleton, a D1 running back. Josh Robinson, a, a corner that I think's D1, even though he's 5'8", about 165. He's got some Tyron Matthew stuff. Jermaine Vessels, another D1 guy, as a linebacker safety. Talian Nichols. Nicholas at running backs could end up being a big-time player. And Arthur Perkins and Jonathan Beal, who has a 4-0 GPA and a, almost a 30, I think he's got a 35 ACT. The starting center, Jonathan Beal, is a big-time center for Catholic High. And those are just the seniors. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some other teams I went by, schools I went to, and then we're going to get into the scrimmages I keep promoting it we're getting there we'll talk about those teams when we come back so hey guys just wanted to take a minute to tell you about harvey autos if you need a new or used car there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out john harvey toyota harvey subaru and lexus of shreveport bozier city low prices honest people tell them lee sent you 
Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. We just talked about some recruiting. I also want to mention I went by Episcopal last week and met with longtime coach Travis Bourgeois. Thank you, Travis, for taking me in for an hour and a half, two hours, and allowing me to hang out in that phenomenal facility that you have. Randy Richard and, and um, all the great players, Jimmy Williams. I got to see Jimmy and all the staff. Thank you for being a great host, for someone showing up and Brought magazines to all the coaches and the kids. I did that with Catholic High. I want to thank Donnie Jones for sponsoring and paying for magazines so we could donate those to his old alma mater, Catholic High School. Thank you for that. And that's what this is about is promoting these kids, helping kids. That's what we do. Um, Also want to mention I went to Hanville, hosted a – Six-team scrimmage on this past Saturday, and I was able to see a lot of good programs. I got to see Hanville. I got to see South Lafouche. I got to see Alexandria High School. I got to see Ruston High School, Edna Carr, and Jesuit. A lot of talent, man. A lot of talent. Uh, Hanville was great. Appreciate you, Coach, and Hanville. I think the Hanville coaches are, are awesome dudes. Got a chance to get a lot of stories out before. I got there at 7 in the morning uh, from Baton Rouge. The first game was 9 o'clock in the morning. Got to hang out with the coaching staff in Hanville. Br- brought them magazines for the team. Hanville's got a receiver who's about to blow up on the scene. Big time receiver, Troy Kendrick. Remember Troy Kendrick, the name Troy Kendrick, 6'2", 190. Not ranked heavily right now, but he will be. Runs about a 4'4", four, 4'5", four, has explosion speed off the ball, great hands, separation that's at another level. Guy that played a little bit last year, but hits, has really blossomed since spring. That's what I love about football and all sports. You see kids blossom. They're raw one year and then they're blossoming and they're filling out and they're becoming the the man child that they could be for college football. Some of these guys have the frame and then they some of them do something with it. He's one of those kids. I was able to see D- Jesuit High School. I got to see a, a, a much improved Dennis Darty, who's a linebacker, 6'2", 230. Man, he explodes outside now. Last year he was a, a, a tough, tough hitter up the middle, you know, against the run, but now he can fly. He can chase running backs sideline to sideline. The prototype Mike linebacker, Dennis Darty, who's getting a lot of Ivy League attention right now, but it really I think he's D1. I think he's D1. Schools are just really picky early on. They want to see senior tape. I get that, but, I mean, they need to go to spring games, and I'll be talking to guys as the, as time goes on promoting a lot of these kids. The quarterback at Jesuit, who didn't start a game last year, Jack, remember the quarterback for Jesuit, who's going to be a 222 kid, Lavier. Jack, Lavier is big time. He's not a name you hear like Eli Holstein or Arch Manning or Walker Howard or Nussmeyer or any of these guys or the quarterback at Madison Prep, but this kid is big time. He's going to be the best senior one-year starter in the country. Mark my words. Hold me to it. 6'3", 208 pounds, cannon arm, and can run a 4'6", and he's got the stuff. He's got it. He's up there with Eli Holstein. He's up there with all those guys. He's going to be a senior at Jesuit. He's a quarterback. He played a lot last year behind LaForge. Luke LaForge, who's a good kid, uh, still available as a long snapper, as a receiver, and a quarterback. But you had two talent quarterbacks. Now Jack is going to be the guy this year. And they have other talent at Jesuit. A lot of, they have a good senior class of, of talent. They got about 10 kids if they want to keep playing ball. Maybe not all of them D1, but they got 10 kids that are seniors. A Jesuit that could go to a college, either one double A, D three, D two, prep schools, all that good stuff. We're gonna take a break when we come back and we'll talk about South Lafouche and Alexandria High School and Ruston and Edna Carr 
we got much, much more. We'll be right back. Parents, are you looking for advice on getting your high school athlete recruited by the right college? Lee Brakeen is your answer. Lee has been doing it for over 30 years. He knows the ropes, and more importantly, he knows the people. Lee offers turnkey service from evaluation, creating highlight tapes in the correct format, and complete guidelines for effective communication with the schools. No matter the sport, girl or boy, no matter what grade your child is in, let Lee Brakeen help match your child to the right college fit. Go to our website, LAFootballMagazine.com and get connected today. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. I hope you're enjoying the show. Be sure to catch all our topics this, this show. I hope you'll have fun listening to it if you like recruiting, if you like your schools that I'm mentioning. Um, a little scoop I mentioned the other day, Aaron Anderson from Edna Carr. I saw Aaron Anderson play in the scrimmage at Hanville this past Saturday. And I knew Aaron was good. You know, we, you know you know when a guy's different. Been doing it this long. This is my 30th year, 31 years overall in the business. Some guys are just different. They've got different different stuff. Aaron Anderson's that guy. If you thought Waddle was good from Alabama or you thought that Rocket Ismail was good from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with Notre Dame, Aaron Anderson has a chance to be better than both of those guys. He's got a God gift instinct of the game, and his speed is a legit 4 2 9. And it's not just speed. Some guys have speed, they don't know how to use it. Some guys have speed, but they're not good football players. This guy's a football player that has speed. He has world class speed, and he's a football player. I saw Aaron take a pass, an out pass. That was defended by two safeties, two linebackers, two corners. They had him on the sideline. And he he just jets. He puts the jets on and outraces everybody on defense and left them by six yards. And they were in front of him. I haven't seen that very much in high school football. I've seen it in the NFL. I've seen it with some of these great skill guys in the NFL. Maybe when Tim Brown was young. You know, maybe when Willie Galt was young. But Aaron Anderson is going to Alabama for his first official visit. I talked to Bryce Brown on this past Saturday of Edna Carr, the head coach. He's taken his first official visit to Alabama. Should LSU be concerned? Yeah. I mean, when you go on Alabama for your first official visit in Tuscaloosa, yeah, I would be a little concerned. But he's that good. He's a guy that LSU's got to sign because he's just a big-time playmaker. Here's a guy, you don't, you don't pencil him as one type of guy. I mean, he's like Waddle. He could be a punt returner, kick returner, receiver, slot. He could catch long ball. He could do it all. He's got speed you can't find. He's got ability you can't teach. Aaron Anderson's a freak. He's the most talented skill guy. Speedy Noel was good, but he didn't have this stuff. Prior to a Speedy Noel. Speedy Noel in high school. And, you know, Racy McMath was pretty good. We talked, I talked to Coach Bryce Brown. He said he's having a great camp with the Tennessee Titans just to give people scoop there. I talked to Bryce Brown. He said he's doing great. And he also wants to compliment Ed Orgeron for letting him sit out the final few games of his senior year because he was hurt. And that allowed him to come back full strength and train for the NFL teams, which allowed him to get drafted. So he credits Archeron for shutting him down because he was, you know, maybe 50% not trying to play him, which I, th- I thought was great. I'm all for that. If a guy's hurt, let him rest. Let him heal up, especially when he's trying to make some money. And so Racing McMath's having a great mini camp with the Tennessee Titans. That's what Bryce was saying. By the way, they're loaded. I don't have time to talk about all 90 kids on that Edna Carr team. We'll talk about it in the preview magazine. Get our preview magazine, LAFootballMagazine.com. Be sure to get a copy when it comes out in September. You can pre-order one right now at LAFootballMagazine.com. Continuing on to Alexandria High School. Got a chance to spend some time with Thomas Bachman, the head coach at Alexandria. Man, they made their first state championship game ever in 220. Way to go, Coach Bachman. 
And they lost a lot of talent. They had Shield Taylor signed with Stanford, and they lost their quarterback. Jude Barton's graduated, going to Northwestern State. But they return a lot of talent. I saw them play this past Saturday in the scrimmage. They have a lot of talent coming back, but not just talent. When you watch Alexandria and you watch these guys scrimmage, you can see it's a different level. It's a different speed now that Bachman's taken the program over. They believe, and they'll go through a wall for him. You know, I'm an observer of the game, body language kind of guy, and these kids, they fight, they claw, they give you the high effort you dream of, and, and I know Bachman's going to get another great year. They might go back and win it this year. I really believe they're good enough. And they got a new quarterback, Joe Bordelon, who's going to be great in the end. He's just really young, really raw, you know. But Jarvis Newton, the running back, is going to be a prospect. Uh, Dalen Hammond and I think uh, T.J. Johnson, these two guys are phenomenal receivers. They're going to sign D1s. And also, you know, I like Jamari Manette, D.N. I think he's LSU good, 6'3", 270, can run about 4'7", 9", 4'8", big-time player, I think. They got a big kid named John Curtis Goodman, who's 6'5", 310 on the O-line, senior. He'll go somewhere. And they have a sleeper named Jermaine Minor, who backed up Shield Taylor. 6'3", about 210, can slide out the receiver, runs about a 4'5", 5'5". He's a, he's a freak, man. The guy physically looks the part. And this is going to be his first year to showcase for college coaches. I want to go and talk about South Lafouche. Very impressed with the Tarpons, man. I watched these guys practice. You won't find a team that hits harder than them. You're not going to find a defensive front that's more physical than South Lafouche. Now, Jesuit was. Jesuit's got a good front. I was impressed with Alexandria High School's front. I was impressed with Hanville's front. I was impressed with all of the defenses, by the way, that day, Edna Carr and Rustin. But South Lafouche, they don't have a lot of D1 guys. But what they got, when metal hits the road, man, these guys are tough. I enjoy watching that. I enjoy watching kids that give high effort and give it everything. You don't see that all the time. And you, I saw that with South Lafouche this past Saturday. Their quarterback, Patrick Gusclair, is going to be a guy that's, you know, really a tough kid that's, that's evolving every day. 5'11", 180, he's, a, he's got a chance to go to a D3 school and be a really good quarterback or an athlete. But they got this kid named Brody Petrie, number four, who's got stealth speed, man. He was the second fastest guy I saw all day in these scrimmages. I mean, Brody runs a 4'4", four, 5'5", four, or better, but he's electric on the field. And I love this linebacker they have, Hunter Conley. 5'11", about 225. Reminds me of a guy I played with in high school, Spencer Moak at Central. Just, man, this dude's a bad dude. And I say that in a good way. He's tough. Hunter Conley is tough. Wes Alleman is another one. It's a linebacker. He's tough. They got a great defensive front at South Lafouche, man. They're tough. I would not want to play these guys. If I was in high school now, I wouldn't want to play them. They're so physical. And that's why they're going to do good. B.J. Young, former Hanville quarterback, Southeastern quarterback. Is the head coach. I think South Lafouche is going to surprise a lot of people this year. I really do. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. They're just, they're just, those kids are committed, man. And they're tough. I love their defense. I think they got enough offense to win some games, upset a couple of people. And look, Rustin came to town. I, uh, I know Kyle Williams is on their staff now, the Hall of Fame Buffalo Bill D tackle. He's not in the Hall of Fame yet, but he will be. Um, I think Rustin does a great job. They've got a lot of great players. Um, they're a team that's going to be getting better. They lost a lot from last year, but I think they're still going to be really good. they they got a lot of talent. they just got to put it together. they just got a bunch of young guys that, that are going to step up over time. That's kind of what I saw with Rustin. The talent's there. they just got a lot of new guys, a lot of new young guys that need to blend in and get some reps. But Rustin's got – they're a very physical team. They're D-line. I like the D-line at Ruston. I think they're very physical. They've got size on D-line. Dennis Williams is a sleeper on the D-line. they got one of the best corners uh, in the state. They've got a really good fullback, and they've got some really good offensive linemen and a very athletic quarterback. 
Uh, a lot of good stuff, man. I, I really enjoyed the scrimmage. I want to thank the Hanville coaches for allowing me to come there and hang out all day and, you know, get home at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than, than being there watching these teams play. I got to see Coach Larry Dotrieve was in town taking in. I got to see Coach Don Rodrigue, who was there promoting the lineman camp that's coming up, I believe, June 19th. I want to give Coach Rodrigue a, a plug. The lineman camp, Pete Jenkins and them, it's June 19th. It's going to be in Thibodeau for OD linemen and linebackers, tight ends. It's June 19th. But they were there. And I got to meet a lot of referees from all over the country. They had a, a seminar. I don't I don't know what you call it, but they had they picked uh, they picked uh, New Orleans and the River Parishes to train uh, refs. And they had refs from Utah. I met refs from Montana, Colorado, California, New York, Texas, Florida. And these guys were trying to become NFL refs. And some of them were trying to become college refs. Some are college refs that were trying to be pro refs. And what was pretty neat, they were telling me that there were other refs there that were in high regard, you know, like guys that, that were in the NFL that were there judging them, like just randomly just watching them call these games, these scrimmages with these high schools. And if they got a good grade, that would allow them to move up. It's pretty neat. Um, but I really appreciate these uh, the referees for, you know, Baseball, football, basketball, softball, you know, all the sports programs, we need them, man. We need good, young uh, umpires and referees, and we need that. We need, we need more people getting into that. It makes the game better. And I know I speak for a lot of co uh, coaches, a lot of college coaches and high school coaches. There's, a, there's, there's really, they need, they need more people to get involved we need more people to do that, and I think it's, it's something you got to have passion for, but I really think there's a lot of opportunity there. You could be a college uh, ref one day, a college umpire one day. You could be a pro umpire one day or a referee. Um, not to start out, there's not a lot of money, but, you know, you get in it and you learn it like anything else, but I, I really would like to see more people uh, get, into, get into that profession because it helps, it helps the game. Football, basketball, baseball, softball, you know, lacrosse, you name it. It, it just helps. We need, we need more young people doing that. But I hope everybody enjoyed the show today. I hope you enjoyed me talking solo. I, know, I hope I didn't bore you to death. Um, but I just wanted to give some information. Sometimes we just take a moment to, to give information to people who love recruiting. And some of their high schools, I was able to talk about. Now, we can't, if you're a mom or dad, listen, I can't talk about every kid on the team, and I can't talk about every school, but we are trying to get as much in every show that we can, humanly possible. Again, I want to thank uh, our two sponsors, uh, which, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. You know, we're growing right now. We're looking for a couple of more sponsors to join our podcast. We're going to take this to video. John Harvey Toyota, Tommy Harvey, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Uh, and Medine's Collision Center in Baton Rouge, thank you, Chris, and Dom Dominica, and also Jesse Medine and, um, on Kincaid Avenue here in Baton Rouge, and then uh, Harvey Toyota, uh, Lexus, Subaru is in Shreveport, Bossier City. And, again, we'll, we'll see you really soon. We've got a great guest coming up uh, later in the week. I'll leave that as a surprise, and I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.